हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ हिमांशु जयस्वाल आय एम असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी जे डी पाटील सांगलोतकर महाविद्यालय दर्यापूर फ्रेंड्स टुडे आय एम गोईंग टू डिस्कस वन टॉपिक दॅट इज मेटाबॉलिक पाथवेज अँड इट्स रेग्युलेशन विथ यू बिफोर स्टार्टिंग माय लेक्चर आय पे माय थँक्स टू द पेटर्न्स ऑफ दिस फायव्ह डेज नॅशनल वर्कशॉप टू द कन्व्हेनर्स अँड टू द ऑर्गनायझिंग कमिटी ऑफ दिस फायव्ह डेज नॅशनल वर्कशॉप for the preparation of CSIR UGC NET and SET examinations in life sciences. Dear students, first of all, we must understand what is a metabolic pathway. So a metabolic pathway is basically a series of chemical reactions that can build or that can break down molecules for the cellular processes. It means that a metabolic pathway is a series of chemical reaction that has ability to build a molecule to create a molecule or either it is intended to degrade some molecule in your cell now on the basis of this the metabolic pathways are classified into two types one is a catabolic pathway and another is anabolic pathway a catabolic pathway is a pathway that leads to the breakdown of molecules and it will produce energy during this breakdown on the other hand anabolic pathway is a pathway that is intended to synthesize some molecule and this pathway will need energy for its operation now any or uh, the catabolic pathway or anabolic pathway both these pathways they need uh, some enzymes for their functioning that's why we can call them as non spontaneous right and regulation of this enzymes of a particular metabolic pathway will lead to the regulation of a particular metabolic pathway such as if you want to increase the speed of a particular metabolic pathway then you can increase the speed of enzymes involved in that in that particular pathway that is leading to the high rates of the uh, pathway and if you want to decrease the speed of a particular metabolic pathway then you can slow down the enzymes you can decrease the speed of enzymes of a particular pathway and then you can decrease the overall the speed of that pathway now what are the levels of metabolic regulation dear friends there we are here discussing two levels of metabolic regulation one is intrinsic regulation another is extrinsic regulation intrinsic regulation means that the regulation is coming itself from the cell right so the if a pathway is regulated from inside the cell by the cytosolic concentration of metabolites and energy level of the cell then it is called as intrinsic regulation and if the pathway is regulated from outside means from other signaling molecules which are not re, uh, which are coming from some glands then it is called as extrinsic regulation so what is the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic regulation in intrinsic regulation the cell itself is regulating its metabolic pathway depending on the cytosolic concentration of metabolites and its energy level while in case of extrinsic regulation some other gland is regulating a particular uh, cell and its metabolic pathways by releasing some chemical molecules that are called as uh, hormones now herein we are going to see one beautiful example of glycolysis which is highly and efficiently regulated by both of these means that is intrinsic regulation and extrinsic regulation now the glycolysis uh, is a very important pathway as far as the living systems are concerned this glycolysis is carried out in the cell cytoplasm and this is one of the most important and ubiquitous pathway among all the metabolic pathways it is important because it provides energy for all living organisms and it is ubiquitous because it is present in all living organisms right from the bacteria to the humans this glycolysis is basically a 10 step pathway that is intended to degrade a glucose molecule into two pyruvate molecules which leads to the production of two atp and two nadh molecules in the cell now in this picture you can see there are two processes one is photosynthesis and another is respiration the photosynthesis is light dependent process while respiration is a light independent process here uh, the in the photosynthesis you are going to capture the uh, energy from sunlight 
and then after that that energy is used for the formation of carbon hydrogen bonds ultimately leading to the formation of a glucose molecule on the other hand when the glucose molecule enters in the respiration it is oxidized and there is production of co2 and h2o and during this process there is release of energy which is trapped in the form of atp so finally the amount of energy you are using or any living system on this planet is using is coming from the light initially photosynthesis photosynthesis harvest energy of light stores it in the form of glucose and ultimately that glucose is used as a source of energy for all other living beings now this picture in this picture you can see that there is a girl who is enjoying her food now what happens after the food enters in the mouth of that girl that uh, first of all the girl is going to chew that food and there is action of salivary amylase on that food which will start to degrade the polysaccharides of that food into the shorter chain polysaccharides then this uh, then this material is sent to the stomach where the where the alpha amylase of the salivary gland are inactivated due to the low ph of stomach and then after that this material is sent to the intestine where further level of degradation is carried out where these uh, shorter polysaccharides are converted into monosaccharides and disaccharides and then after that the further degradation is carried out by the intestinal epithelial cell leading to the formation of monosaccharides which are uptaken in the intestinal epithelial cell and then they are released in the blood now once the glucose enters in the blood after that this glucose molecule uh, circulates throughout your body and from body uh, from blood it diffuses to the tissue fluid after its diffusion in the tissue fluid its concentration in tissue fluid increases that is leading to the transport of glucose from extracellular fluid to the cytosol with the help of glute transporters these glute transporters are the transporters that mediate facilitate diffusion of these uh, glucose molecule from their high concentration to their low concentration and they can mediate both way transport that is they can transport the glucose molecules from outside cell to inside cell as well as from inside to outside depending on the concentration gradient of the glucose now what happens once a glucose enters in your cell here in we are taking an example of liver cell so when a glucose molecule enters in your cell initially it is converted into glucose 6 phosphate by the activity of enzyme glucokinase and this enzyme needs atp for its functioning so this enzyme will utilize one atp and it will convert atp into adp and then after that there is formation of glucose 6 phosphate now this glucose 6 phosphate can move in three phases one is glycogen synthesis another is glyco uh, glycolysis and the third phase is hexose monophosphate shunt so this glucose 3 for 6 phosphate can move in three ways one is glycogen synthesis another is glycolysis and the third one is hexose monophosphate shunt now which is the deciding factor where it should go so the deciding factor is energy level of the cell and another is the amount of nad ph and nadp in the cell so if your cell is energy uh, is in energy rich condition it will have very high amount of atp so if the amount of atp is high the adp uh, the atp to adp ratio will be high and ultimately in this condition the glucose 6 phosphate will be targeted for the glycogen synthesis on the other hand if your cell is in energy deficient condition which means that your cell is having more amount of adp and less amount of atp then the glucose 6 phosphate will be targeted to the glycolysis and in the third case when the ratio of nadph to nadp is low which means that your cell is having very high amount of nadp and very low amount of nadph then this glucose 6 phosphate is targeted to the hmp so this the fate of glucose 6 phosphate will be dependent on the energy conditions of cell and the concentration of nadp and nadph now after this you can see there is a uh, diagrams of glycolysis and in this diagram there is total 10 steps 
through which a glucose molecule is converted into two pyruvate molecules and du during this step the during this process there is production of two molecules of atp and two molecules of nadph we will see each and every step uh, of glycolysis in detail in upcoming slides so the first one that is the first reaction of glycolysis is conversion of glucose into the glucose 6-phosphate by the activity of enzyme hexokinase. This hexokinase requires ATP for its functioning and during this it converts one ATP into ADP and that phosphate from ATP is transferred on the 6th position of glucose leading to the formation of glucose 6-phosphate. This reaction of glycolysis is an irreversible reaction and it is a regulated step that is uh, that is this step is regulated by different types of activators and inhibitors in the cell. Now in your all body cells one enzyme that is hexokinase it functions for carrying out this step while in case of liver there is a different enzyme called as glucokinase that uh, is carrying out this step in liver cells. Now there is a reason behind this. Dear students keep in mind that the liver is storage place of your uh, glucose and your body is utilization place of your glucose. Now what happens is when a blood inter, uh, when the glucose enters in your bloodstream the glucose must be initially utilized by the body cells and then after it is it should be utilized by the uh, liver cells. So now what happens is when you eat something which is having high amount of glucose or which is degraded into glucose then what happens is the initially the blood glucose concentration raises leading to the uh, entry of glucose in all the cells of body where hexokinase which is an efficient enzyme it converts uh, this glucose into glucose 6-phosphate and the, if amount of glucose is excess in your cell then glucose is again sent back to the tissue fluid from where it is again sent back to the blood and then this glucose again enters into the liver where the enzyme glucokinase converts it into the uh, glucose 6-phosphate. This glucokinase is very slow enzyme and hexokinase is a fast enzyme. So keep in mind at the storage place you have kept a slow enzyme and at the utilization place you have kept a very fast enzyme right this glucose 6-phosphate is an unstable form that will be readily cleaved into three carbon products but before this cleavage the first thing is you are going to convert that glucose molecule into uh, uh, into fructose 6-phosphate by the act activity of enzyme phosphoglucomutase this enzyme requires Mg dipositive as a cofactor and this enzyme carries out the isomerization of glucose 6-phosphate to the fructose 6-phosphate in this step. Here glucose which is a aldose sugar is converted into fructose which is a keto sugar. Now the third step of third and most important step of glycolysis is conversion of the fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by the activity of enzyme phosphofructokinase 1 again this enzyme will require ATP for its functioning this uh, the step carried out by this uh, enzyme is irreversible and this step of glycolysis is highly regulated and rate limiting step of glycolysis keep in mind that this step that is step number 3 of glycolysis is highly regulated and rate limiting step of glycolysis regulated because it is having number of activators and inhibitors and rate limiting because it is the slowest step of glycolysis. Now herein you can see that this step is regulated by different activators such as AMP, ADP and fructose 2 6 base phosphate. Now keep in mind that these two molecules ADP and AMP will be high in your cell when your cell is energy deficient right so if your cell is energy deficient it must increase the speed of glycolysis and how it is going to speed up the glycolysis by activating the phosphofructokinase 1 which is slowest enzyme of your glycolysis through the ADP and AMP on the other hand another molecules such as ATP 
एच पॉजिटिव एंड सिट्रेट दे एक्ट एज इनहिबिटर ऑफ दिस एंजाइम ए टी पी एक्ट एज इनहिबिटर ऑफ दिस एंजाइम बिकॉज ए टी हाई अमाउंट ऑफ ए टी पी इज अ साइन ऑफ हाई एनर्जी कंडीशन एंड वेन यूर सेल इज हैविंग वेरी हाई अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी देन देर इज नो नीड टू स्पीड अप द ग्लाइकोलिस दस दिस स्टेप इज इनिबिटेड बाय ए टी पी दिस स्टेप इज अगेन इनिबिटेड बाय द एच पॉजिटिव आयन एंड साइट्रेट आयन साइट्रेट मॉलिक्यूल्स इन यूर सेल right so this is the main thing about the step number 3 you should remember the activators and inhibitors of this uh, step number 3 now one more activator of this step is fructose 2,6 bisphosphate and the role of fructose 2,6 bisphosphate we'll see in upcoming slides after regulation mediated by the atp adp and amp we'll see in detail how the fructose 2,6 bisphosphate is going to regulate the speed of glycolysis dear students when the amount of glucose increases in the blood there is production of insulin and when insulin is secreted it will bind on the receptors present on the cell surface the signaling mediated by insulin it will activate phosphofructokinase 2 enzyme what the signaling mediated by insulin will activate phosphofructose kinase 2 enzyme that converts fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 2,6 bisphosphate and the fructose 2,6 bisphosphate will be going to activate phosphofructokinase 1 which is the slowest enzyme of glycolysis now increasing in the speed of this enzyme will ultimately lead to increase in the rate of reaction of this uh, uh, enzyme and finally leading to the increased rate of reactions of the glycolysis now the next step of the glycolytic pathway is conversion of fructose 1,6 bisphosphate to the fruct uh, to dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate this is carried out by enzyme aldolase aldolase splits fructose 2,6 bisphosphate into two three carbon molecules one is dihydroxyacetone phosphate which is a ketonic sugar and another is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which is aldehydic sugar then after this the dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by the activity of enzyme triose phosphate isomerase this triose phosphate isomerase enzyme requires mg di positive as a cofactor for its functioning now after this there is formation of two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which are then converted into two molecules of 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate by the activity of enzyme glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase and this enzyme needs uh, the help of 2 NAD positive which is converted into 2 NADH during this step so during this step the 2 NAD positive molecules are converted into 2 NADH the NADH is an energy rich form while NAD positive is energy deficient form so you are converting the NAD positive which is low energy form into a high energy form that is NADH and during this step there is incorporation of two inorganic phosphate on the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which leads to the formation of 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate dear students keep in mind that iodoacetate is a potent inhibitor of this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme now after this the 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3 phosphoglycerate by the activity of enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase this enzyme converts 2 adp into 2 atp and in this step there is formation of 2 atp what in this step there is formation of 2 atp by removal of phosphate groups from 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate such formation of atp is called as substrate level for phosphorylation what is the meaning of substrate level phosphorylation substrate level phosphorylation is synthesis of atp directly by transferring phosphate groups from the substrate to the adp uh, adp राइट right? जब किसी सब्सट्रेट से डायरेक्टली फॉस्पेट ग्रुप्स निकालकर एडीपी पर ऐड किए जाते हैं 
उस और उसका कन्वर्शन ए में होता है देन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सबस्टेट लेवल फॉस्फोराइलेशन नाउ आफ्टर दिस देर इज कन्वर्शन ऑफ थ्री फॉस्पोग्लिसराइड इंटू टू फॉस्पोग्लिसराइड बाय द एक्टिविटी ऑफ एंजाइम फॉस्पोग्लिसरो म्यूटेज एंड देन आफ्टर दैट देर इज कन्वर्शन ऑफ टू फॉस्पोग्लिसराइड इंटू टू मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ फॉस्पोइनॉल पायरोवेट बाय द एक्टिविटी ऑफ एंजाइम इनोलेस इनोलेस बेसिकली रिमूव वॉटर मॉलिक्यूल्स फ्रॉम द टू फॉस्पोग्लिसराइड नाउ कीप इन माइंड दैट दिस इनोलेस इज स्ट्रॉन्गली इनहिबिटेड बाय द फ्लोराइड मॉलिक्यूल so if you are going to provide fluoride molecules in the cell then it is going to bind to the enolase and then it will in inhibit the enzyme enolase the next is the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate into pyruvate and this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate kinase the pyruvate kinase utilizes energy uh, it it utilizes to adp and it converts it into AT, atp this is again can be called as substrate level phosphorylation the pyruvate kinase it needs mg dipositive or mn dipositive as a cofactor and this pyruvate kinase is also regulated by the cytosolic concentrations of h uh, a of atp and other molecules so this is the last step of glycolysis so we have seen all the 10 steps of glycolysis in detail now we'll go for the extrinsic regulation of glycolysis dear friends till now we have seen the intrinsic regulation of glycolysis which is mediated by the atp adp amp fructose 26 bisphosphate which are basically present in the cytosol of that cell now we'll go for the explanation of extrinsic regulation of glycolysis now this extrinsic regulation means as i have said earlier if metabolic pathway of a particular cell is going to be regulated by the signaling molecules which are released by some glands then it is called as extrinsic regulation so the glycolysis is very efficiently regulated by two hormones one is glucagon and another is insulin glucagon is produced by the alpha cells of pancreas while insulin is produced by the beta cells of pancreas now in this figure you can see that there are two conditions one is hyperglycemia and another is hypoglycemia so what is hyperglycemia hyper means more glycemia means sugar or glucose in your blood hypoglycemia means low and low sugar concentration in blood is called as hypoglycemia now after consuming food the amount of glucose increases in the blood which is sensed by the pancreas the beta cells of pancreas in such condition produces insulin the insulin will work on liver cells and body cells in body cells it deposits glucose it increases the rate of transport of glucose in the all body cells and in liver it functions for the increased speed of glycogen synthesis so in production of insulin will decrease blood glucose levels by two ways it facilitates the transport of glucose to all the cells of body and then after that it promotes the storage of glucose in the form of glycogen in the liver now when the blood glucose level drops during the starvation what happens is it is sensed by the pancreas and alpha cells of pancreas start to produce glucagon in such condition this glucagon acts on the liver it by acting on liver it starts to degrade the glycogen what it degrades glycogen after which there is production of glucose and that glucose will be released in the blood stream which will in eventually increase the blood glucose concentration clear so in low blood glucose concentration there is production of glucagon in high blood glucose concentration there is production of insulin by the pancreas now how insulin regulates the process of glycolysis and glycogen synthesis even glycogenolysis we'll see dear students the insulin is received on the cells by the receptor receptor tyrosine kinase after the binding of insulin on this receptor the receptor get activated and there is production of number of signaling molecules 
these signaling molecules increases protein synthesis in the cell they lead to cell survival and they also lead to the proliferation of cells on the other hand these signaling molecules increases the number of glut transporters on the plasma membrane by mediating fusion of vesicles from the cell to the plasma membrane thus the amount of glucose uptaken will be increased and the third thing they are going to do they are going to inhibit the glycolysis of liver cells right insulin inhibits glycolysis of liver cell it promotes glycogen breakdown in the liver cells and it also inhibits the glycogen synthesis in the liver cells clear so what are the three functions of insulin it decreases the rate of glycolysis in liver cell it increases the rate of glycogen degradation that is called as glycogenolysis in the liver cells and it inhibits the process of glycogen synthesis it also increases lipolysis that is uh, sorry it also uh, stimulates lip lipid biosynthesis in the adipose tissue now these are the functions of insulin on different uh, tissues in liver tissue insulin stimulates glycogen synthesis protein synthesis and lipogenesis means synthesis of fatty acids it inhibits gluconeogenesis glycogenolysis and ketogenesis in the liver on the other hand in muscles it stimulates the glyco glucose transport glycogen synthesis and protein synthesis while it inhibits proteolysis in case of muscles in adipose tissue it leads to the glucose transport and lipogenesis and it leads to the inhibition of lipolysis in the adipose tissue now the glucagon mediated regulation glucagon is released by the alpha cells of pancreas when the blood glucose levels are low and in such condition this signaling molecule must increase the blood glucose levels now how it is going to do that the glucagon will bind on the gpcr receptors of the cell surface there is activation of cmp this cmp will eventually activate two molecules one is the creb and another is pk creb is camp response element binding protein it moves to the nucleus and there is also activation of pk that is protein kinase a the protein kinase a signals for the inhibition of glycogen synthesis in liver it promotes glycogenolysis that is degradation of glycogen in liver which will lead to the production of glucose this pk it inhibits pyruvate kinase and thus the glycolysis of liver cells are inhibited again this pk and creb together they are going to stimulate the process of gluconeogenesis that is conversion of the fructose 6 phosphate into the fruct uh, glucose right so this is called as gluconeogenesis and it is stimulated by the glucagon ultimately glucagon is going to stop glycogen synthesis it is going to increase the rate of glycogenolysis it is going to inhibit the glycolysis of liver cells and due to which there is increased amount of glucose in the liver cells which will be released in the blood and that will eventually lead to the increased concentration of blood glucose in the body now let's come to the conclusion in this lecture we have seen the two mechanisms of regulation one is intrinsic regulation and other is extrinsic regulation intrinsic regulation is mediated by the atp adp amp fructose fructose 26 bisphosphate while extrinsic regulation is mediated by the glucagon and insulin Dear students, this is my contact number and this is my mail ID. If you have any query or any doubt regarding the topic or any other topic of CSIR, you can contact me on this number. Thank you for your patience.